Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum and uh, greetings to all. My name is Ghulam Mushtaba and uh, today uh, in this video I'm going to uh, share my views uh, on the uh, one of the book, printed book by my friend, my brother and my inspiration, a great uh, Sayyid Ali Abbas Abdi Sahib. And uh, he gave me opportunity to uh, to uh, record one video from the reported cases, 169 reported cases of the barrister Muhammad Ali Jinnah, uh, great Muhammad Ali Jinnah, one of uh, he he was our founder. Not only he was our founder, but he was also a great jurist. So there's a uh, there's a one book that is uh, the name of the book the genius jurist uh, which is the selection of the reported cases of the Muhammad Ali Jinnah. Uh, there are one sixty nine cases in that book which has, uh, which are selected. So I'm here to uh, present you uh, uh, from those one sixty nine reported cases the one case which uh, which uh, which was reported in uh, AIR nineteen thirty two. Piri Council, page number 178, which was, uh, which was uh, uh, fixed before the full bench, Lord uh, Belmnesberg, Lord Russell of uh, Kilowin and uh, Sir uh, uh, Dinsha Mullah, they were the member of that bench and the parties were in that case the Commissioner of the Income Tax. Appel, uh, appellant versus the uh, SM uh, Chitnavas uh, Chit Naves uh, is the respondent and the firm RP Hills uh, representing the appellant and the firm of Muhammad Ali Jinnah, uh, Barrister Muhammad Ali Jinnah representing the respondent and uh, defending the uh, judgment of the assistant commissioner. So the legal points and the uh, uh, which leads this uh, appeal before the Privy Council is that uh, the number of the uh, case in the Privy Council is that the Privy Council appeal number 71 of 1930. So this appeal is an, uh, an appeal from a judgment of the court of the judicial, uh, judicial commissioner. Central provinces upon a reference of the question of law made at the instance of a uh, Assessi under uh, section 66 subsection 2 of the Income Tax Act 1922. Uh, the question involved were considered by the said court to be such importance that the case was uh, after argument before the two commissioners uh, re-argued before the uh, full bench. Two separate and distinct matters are raised for the decision before said court, before the Privy Council and its adjudication upon each, uh, each was diverse to the present appellant. In respect of one of the such matters, he made no attempt to appeal and the dispute in regard thereto is at an end. In regard to the other matters, however, he applied to said court for leave to appeal to His Majesty in Council and in response to that application, the court certified that the requirements of the section 109 subclass O of the Civil Procedure Code 1908 were fulfilled. So, in as uh, much as a question of great public importance is involved in the case, their lordship draw attention to this aspect of the case at the outset in view of the contentions which were advanced before uh, before the bench on behalf of the respondent, the facts of the case, uh, uh, the fact of the brief uh, and the summary of the facts of the brief uh, of the case is that Sashankar Rao uh, Chitnaves, uh, uh, who will be referred as the SAC in this case for the purpose of assessment to income tax for the year 1926 to 1927, had under section 22 of the Act to make a return of his total income uh, during the year 1925 to 26. He returned that income of the rupee 74,668. The income tax officer proceeding section 23 of the Act by this order dated 17th January 1927 
assess the total income at the uh, figure of the rupee one lakh sixteen thousand four hundred eighty. In arriving at this figure, the officer had disallowed certain deductions which had been made by the SIC. The SIC appealed under Section Thirty of the Act against the Assessment Assistant Commissioner. who by uh, his order dated 25th april 1927 reduced the amount of the assessment rupee 1 lakh 13000 and the assessor commissioner allowed some but disallowed other of the said deductions so these are the uh, uh, brief uh, facts which leading this uh, appeal before the uh, privy council further uh, further the case of appellant uh, before the privy council is that the whole of the bad debit amounting uh, rupees 70982 uh, should have been allowed lists were called for the showing details of the debits uh, uh, showing the detail of debts when the amounts were due in order to ascertain when the debts uh, were really ascertained uh, to be bad or on the examination uh, it was found that the rupees 7481 were on account of the old de bad debts which could not be allowed in the account year the rest were allowed uh, mr zinzarde argues that it should be left to assess to declare when the debts were bad and the income tax officer should not go on the presumption that the amount had become time barred in previous years it appears to me that the criterion Uh, to know when that uh, debt is bad is uh, that all the legal remedies to recover fail the assessees could not be said to be able to recover but hope will not convert an irrecoverable loan into a recoverable item it is i think not to write allow uh, some which had become time barred long before the account year the assessee then required the commissioner to refer to the high court under section 66 subsection 2 of the act certain question of law alleged to arise out of the order of the assessment commissioner that which led to the said sum rupee uh, so and so being described in the assessee's petition these terms has not the assessee got the option of declaring debts bad when he finds after sufficient vetting that from the circumstances of the debtors he was unable to recover them can the income tax authority deprive the sec of this option should not the income tax officer and assessor commissioner have allowed the rupees so and so to the sec on the same consideration on which the remaining amount out of uh, 17982 claim by him was allowed an oral affirmation was made by the general agent of the sec which contained the following statement in regard to the bad debt the bad debts uh, amounting rupees 7481 had already gone bad owing to their uh, being time barred much before the account year that is uh, they had gone time barred in previous account years but we did not write them off in the hope that they would uh, be allowed uh, would be collected later on but as they did not come to be uh, so collected they were written off during the account year the commissioner in accordance with the section 66 subsection 2 of the act drew up a judicial commissioner oh, sorry drew uh, up a statement of the case and referred it with his own opinion there on to the court of the judicial commissioner the statement contains two passage which required to be set out the first is this rupee such uh, so and so uh, involved in this case in all the sec had claimed a deduction of the rupee 17982 on the account of the bad debts of these debts amounting uh, to rupee 10105 were such as had fallen bad during the account year and were written off in that year and were Uh, were allowed debts amounting rupees such and so uh, so and so were very old and had become uh, bad on the account of the being time barred or otherwise much before the account year they should have been written off in those years and were therefore not allowed the other uh, passage runs therefore uh, uh, that the assessment is to be made on the income of the previous year this is arrived after the making certain deduction or allowances specif specified in the act these deductions or allowances must also relate to the previous year 
expenditure actual or national notional that does not lead to the previous year cannot be allowed the act does not allow losses to be carried forward from one year to another the bad debts are a form of notional expenditure and such expenditure must to be deemed to be incurred when the debts become bad that is when they are found to be irrevocable when they become bad in a question of fact to be determined by the income tax officer income tax tax officer it is clear it is clear that the submission that the assessee cannot be allowed to accumulate bad debt and write them off in the year when uh, when he will escape the largest possible amount of the income tax by doing so so in this regard the uh, opinion of the full bench is very much important the opinion of the full bench was unanimous on the points involved in the reference and in accordance with there with the court of the judicial commissioner by order 13 december answer the question in relation to the bad debts as follows the assessee has the option of declaring debt uh, bad when he finds after sufficient vetting that from the circumstances of the debts that debt, uh, debtors is unable to recover them as the law at present stands the income tax authority cannot deprive the assessee of this option the present non applicant was therefore entitled to the deduction of the rupees so and so on the same consideration on which the balance of the amount rupees 17892 was allowed the grounds for this decision are contained in opinion of the delivered by the mr kinkare additional judicial commissioner with which two other members of the court merely expressed their agreement they took the view as uh, their lordship uh, read his opinion number 1 that an assc is entitled to ascertaining his uh, his profit for the year to deduct number 2 that in assessing the taxable profit for any account year the assc is entitled and number 3 that in this regard the assc is the sole arbitrator and that his deduction is final the case was uh, argued by the uh, mr jina and his company uh, on behalf of the respondent that the appeal must be dismissed he conceded that the nsc was not entitled in computing his business profit and gains of one year to detect a loss in fact incurred in the uh, earlier year further he said that uh, he was not concerned to argue uh, that an assc was the sole arbitrator to decide whether a debt was bad and when it had become bad because this particular assc was entitled to succeed upon the evidence as stood in uh, this particular case he claimed that in this particular case the deduction of the rupee 17 uh, 7000 a 481 had been disallowed by the officer and the assessor commissioner solely upon the insufficient ground that the debts uh, represented by that sum had become statute barred before the year in question and that accordingly the debts being admittedly bad there was no evidence to justify the disallowances of the deduction in the particular year so their lordship are not prepared to accept this view that the disallowance Uh, rested solely on the fact that the limitation period had expired the debts are stated to be not only time barred but are also described as very old and as old have bad debts which could not be allowed in the account uh, year however this may be it is clear that the members of the court of the judicial commissioner intended to decide and thought that they were deciding not a question affecting only a particular assc and depending upon the state of the evidence in a particular case but question of great public importance affecting assc is generally and depending upon the general principles the question for reference under section 66 of the act which were framed by the assc are perhaps not very happily worded but the use of word option and the question whether the income tax authority can deprive the assc of the alleged option help to throw light upon what was the real issue between the parties their lordship feel no doubt as to what the issue was and how it arose uh, the officer under section 23 of the act after considering the evidence and account uh, books produced and disallowed the deduction and the assistant commissioner confirmed the allowances 
the argument on behalf of the assessee by the uh, who the respondents uh, is apparent in order of the assessor commissioner he states therein that the pleader for the assessee argued that it should be left to assess to declare when the debts were paid and the income tax officer should not go on the presumption that the amount had become time barred in previous year from this their lordship are satisfied that the attitude adopted by the assessee when challenged was to decline to establish by evidence that the old debts uh, had not uh, already become bad before the commencement of the year of the account and to claim the right uh, to be sole arbitrator of the question in dispute that was a real issue between the parties which the court of the judicial commissioner wrongly is their lordship conceived decided in favor of the assessee so in their lordship's opinion the question was the referred to the court in relation to the bad debts should have been answered on the following footings which are the ssc has no option of declaring debts bad whether a de uh, debt is bad and when it become bad are questions of fact to be determined in a case of the dispute not by the ssc or by the exercise of any option on his part but by the appropriate tribunal upon consideration of all relevant admissible evidence in the circumstances of the present case it is not possible to say that the income tax officer and assessor commissioner should have allowed uh, the deduction rupees so and so to the ssc on the same consideration on which the remaining amount of rupees 17902 uh, claimed by him was allowed so their lordship all accordingly humbly advise his majesty that this appeal uh, should uh, have been allowed and their order of the citizen commissioner uh, date and uh, so and so was restored so far as they relate to the uh, deduction there will be no cost of this appeal so this was the landmark case uh, which the later on published in ar uh, index and now uh, is uh, available for the reference to the young lawyers jurists so i also uh, recommend this book to the young lawyers jurists uh, judges uh, in order to enrich their legal period in mind and uh, to, uh, to read these cases uh, of the um, barrister mohammad ali jina once again i i would like to extend my uh, bundle of uh, uh, my humble uh, thanks Uh, to my uh, colleague Syed Ali uh, Raza Abdi Sahab, who provided me, suggested me uh, this opportunity uh, to uh, record on video uh, this uh, one case from the uh, book, The Genius Jurist. Thank you very much.